Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Item 13, Suburban Regeneration Biannual Report. Got Janine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. They fire away. Right. This um, biannual report outlines implementation of suburban regeneration projects funded and actively progressed in the last uh, six-month period between October of last year and March of this year. It's structured around the currently agreed higher priority regeneration uh, locations, as shown to the right of this slide. More detailed, imp in more detailed information on the implementation of the uh, master plans and community-led plans can be found on the Council's web pages to do with community-led planning and the master plans. Uh, a large number of Council uh, teams um, plus external organisations, Christchurch NZ, Life and Vacant Spaces and the Green Lab uh, have contributed to this report and the various projects that have been canvassed in it. The responsibility and credit for delivery of uh, suburban regeneration projects also rests with private developers and with the community as shown on the left of this slide. So I'm just going to run through a, a quick five minute presentation just highlighting uh, some of the um, aspects of the report, um, after which we're happy to ask questions or come back to you if needed. So projects commenced, progressed or completed in the higher priority suburban regeneration locations during that six month reporting period are shown here. In New Brighton, uh, councils completed the uh, demolition of the former Westpac building at 56 Brighton Mall in anticipation of the future extension of Orem Ave. The site's been temporarily fenced uh, ahead of its activation as an interim pedestrian walkway um, and community space, which we're hoping to deliver by the end of this financial year. Mm. And can I just say, um, you'll shortly be considering this, the uh, vacant sites rating differential and applying it in New Brighton. Um, I know you haven't made your decision on that, but if you did, under the current situation, the council would be liable uh, for paying that. Um, so the council applies its same rules consistently on itself as it does the private sector, but we will also be working hard to uh, start doing that work uh, to make sure it's an appropriate standard so that we try and avoid that, and we would encourage all private owners to do the same as well. Thank you. And in Limwood Village, uh, the council's completed installation of the uh, pumping station perspective, which was a new interactive artwork in the Doris Gas Reserve. Um, and back in February, it also started construction of the Linwood Village streetscape upgrade um, to Stanmore Road between Gloucester and Worcester Street. Sorry, Kerry. <laughs> Projects in the other master plan locations are shown here, and the range of them well illustrates that responsibility for project delivery and urban regeneration in suburban centres is shared between the council, other agencies, uh, developers and the community. With respect to Selwyn Street, um, since writing this biannual report, uh, the government's obviously announced that um, they won't be funding the $90 million Brown Street upgrade beyond pre-implementation at this point, um, subject to uh, future affordability depending on um, whether there's any unspent funding on other projects, so that's kind of a, a wait and see at the moment. Um, and as Bruce has mentioned, um, the council's proposed extending the uh, city vacant differential rating to um, four of the suburban centres, uh, being New Brighton, Sydenham, Limwood Village and Littleton, given the extent of vacant uh, sites in those suburban centres. Numerous projects have also been commenced, progressed or completed um, at other suburban locations during the reporting period. Uh, the two examples there uh, show the potential for use of council-owned land to achieve good community outcomes. In addition to the uh, harbour, uh, the Diamond Harbour project that you um, considered earlier this afternoon, the council's also initiated and approved a process uh, to look at future land use options for the council land in Akaroa, known as the BP Meat Site, uh, and that will involve um, engagement with um, Onuki Wurunanga and the community in due course. 
finally, various community-led initiatives across the city have been supported by Life in Vacant Spaces, the Green Lab, uh, and the um, grants and the other financial tools that are shown on this slide. Uh, those initiatives uh, range from a site activation in Norwood Village, um, supported by the Council's Alive in Places program, um, a community art jam in Littleton, uh, the building and installation of Weta Hotels in Richmond, um, and the building of a sensory play, nature play area in uh, the residential red zone in Birwood. There's a lot going on. Uh, do you have mm. any questions? Questions? Councillor Harrison Hunt. Kia ora. Thank you so much for that. Um, there's going to be a lot coming in into long-term plan, but I just wanted to touch on the differential. And um, what would council's work plan change whether we vote or do not vote um, for that in terms of the way that we upgrade our vacant sites? Um, in terms of our own sites, um, that would... Uh, there would be no change um, either way on that. We should be doing that and um, making sure that we uh, lead by example. Mm. And we've even looked, as part of the exercise, uh, we go out and we inspect uh, all sites. We've identified sites that wouldn't meet, council-owned sites that wouldn't meet the mm. criteria for the vacant sites differential, but aren't looking their best. So some of that's then been feedback to operational departments to say, hey, can you do a tidy up? We should be um, looking our best for... Uh, our land and being the leaders on that. Okay, I'm thinking about the old Rickerton Memorial site, which is proposed to be having work done to it yep. in 2025. But I'm wondering about the cost of that rate in comparison to how much it would cost to just quickly chuck some soil on it until it's ready to be built. Let, let me take that offline. Uh, I'll look into that specifically and talk to Park's colleagues about that as well. No if, you, if you have plans in place, the rate doesn't kick in, I'm pretty sure is the answer. Uh, Mm. Yes, but you've got to be giving effect to them. It's not uh -huh. um, it's not appropriate just to have a resource consent or a building consent yeah, and then yeah, not be actioning it. You've got to see action as well. I see. Okay. Thanks. The Templeton? Yeah. That's the piece. Kia ora. Um, given the recent um, change in direction on Brougham Street, what does that do and what are, what are our next steps for um, our planned upgrades on Selwyn Street? Um, I've sp spoke to the, um, the project manager, David Sutton, for the moment, um, just given the uncertainty um, around that, for the moment um, it's still a planned council project that's got um, $850,000 funding in financial year 27-28 in the draft LTP, although that may change. In the meantime, um, Urban Regeneration and Urban Design staff are working together in preparation of approaching um, NZTA just to ensure that the site, um, as it exists in the interim, um, is, is um, kept in a you know, reasonably quality standard rather than the current um, post-demolition fence only. Because um, in due course, um, it would be good to see it um, landscaped as they're proposing to do once the upgrade goes ahead um, to a consistent um, manner as the council owned reserve across the street. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I mean, it would be great if, um, even if they could just grass it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. As a you know, temporary measure for a, for a few years. Yeah. Grass or some natives or all that, that you know, bit of planting this, would be. Yeah, the suggestion will be re retain the existing trees, grass it. Um, they could start doing some of the planting that they're anticipating, albeit sort of to the rear of the site rather than along the Brown Street frontage. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it could potentially look better than it currently is. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Fields. Well, thank you. Um, just on page 314, it's Action C2, it's Donald, regarding Donald Street stable site and just noting um, the work that Christchurch NZ's urban development team is doing. Given, what am I trying to ask? We're just in the final throes of the long-term plan now. I'm not quite sure to the extent of which the, you know, the territory that's being looked at um, through that through that work, but also where the as where the long term plan currently sits, are, are there any concerns about the ability to be able to progress that work given the current funding arrangements for Christchurch NZ? 
I think we would need to leave the funding arrangements aside. Rachel's here from Christchurch NZ, so she might be able to update you on where actual work is to date um, on it. But I think the question of funding, etc., we need to take offline and uh, come back to you through the chief executive. Yeah, so I think with the Littleton project, the team is currently working through the various options with a plan to bring those proposals both to our board and to the community board as well. So there should be some updates on where that's at and what the options are going to be in the next little while. Um, that's probably the very... I guess, and thank you, Rachel. No, that's cool. Like, uh, and I appreciate that might be coming soon. I'm just, I guess I'm just slightly worried. Is there, I mean, is there anything that we're doing in the long-term plan that, that may not allow that to progress, I guess, is... is and maybe that's too commercially a sensitive subject to raise here. Yeah, let me take that offline, yeah. discuss it with uh, Rachel and the others from Grocery Gen Z, and right. we'll come back to you appropriately. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh, Councillor Johansson. Uh, yeah, thank you. Just on page three twelve. Oh, and thank you for the report. Really good to get the um, PowerPoint and the presentation. Just on page three one two, which is the ferry road master plan. The action CE three bus priority upgrades. It says funding for a bus priority project on ferry road has been requested through inclusion in the PT Futures detailed business case. Consultation will not occur until this funding has been confirmed, which expected later this year. But in the CRAF report, we're told that the design will be done by June 2024. Do we have a copy of the design? And what's the process around engaging now that we've completed the design? Yeah, so that, that really sounds like a, it's a question for our transport colleagues, so we'll right. get them to answer that and send that through. Thank you. Okay, but it's not... So I'm just okay. Okay. Well, I'm happy to move this report. Um, Councillor McDonald's happy to second it. Is there any debate? I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of our meeting. So we'll stand for the closing karakia. Well done getting that up so quickly. Kia whakaerea te tapu. Kia wātia ai te ara, ki tūruki whakataha ai, ki tūruki whakataha ai. Ho oh, mea, hui ei, tā ai ki ei. Kia ora. Thanks everyone. Well done.